So literally that? earlier this morning, we had our little folder full of all of our apartments we're looking at. And we are gonna sign a lease for a year. Oh, look how blue I am. It's weird, eh? Mm -hmm. And now, we've totally changed our mind where we might buy a Sprinter van. Yeah. 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 There it is. Yeah. Initial thoughts, buddy? Love it. No, you do not, do you? Why did you give me that look like you don't love it? My initial thoughts are I'm very concerned. It is much smaller than I thought. <laughs> I'm not ready to poo out of a bucket, and this one was broken or something, buddy. Anyways, we're test driving it now, so. Oh, all right. Here. It's hit at the back corner, but you can get the car fax for this. The big advantage to this van is that it fits perfectly in a spot. So yeah, it's pretty tight, but uh, you know, my design would be a full mattress in the back there, and then it fully slides up into like kind of a bed, uh, sorry, a couch. Um, so you have this walkability as well as storage when you're, you know, if you want to have bikes in it and stuff like that. And then all here will just be countertop. Uh, this will be removed. This chair would be swiveled so you can kind of sit in and hang out. There'll be another kind of chair that pulls out from there. And you can prep your meals and anyway. I've got the vision. I just need the permission. Kicking it. Kick it, kicking it. Just kicking it. Kick it, kicking it. Kick it, kick it. You know those days you find yourself like making a massive decision and it kind of like needs to be made? Like we need to make this decision. And I, I see so many pros in both situations, but like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. I think I'm thinking, let's live the adventure. Boom. I don't know It's not fun for Louie. Live that adventure. Uh, so fast forward a couple days and we got the van. Uh, today's Saturday and I was working on a few, a little bit yesterday and the day before. Uh, just doing some minor changes. Uh, for example, this van came with a big privacy divider. I took that out, and that's nice to take out because you know you'll extend the well the square footage, but also this weighs a ton, so it removes a little bit of weight. I uh, took out the floor, gave it a really good clean. It's kind of crappy weather today. Give it a good clean. I ripped out the panels, and she's ready for installation. Uh, which I was planning on doing today, but uh, it's pretty wet out, and I don't want to, you know, get the insulation all wet and track water through the van. So I think what we'll do is just uh, get some tints on it, um, maybe do some minor work, but uh, save the insulation for a drier day. I figured I'd just drive out to meet this dude for insulation. Uh, I ended up going with a product called Thin Slate by 3M. And it was a bitch to track down. Oh, there he is. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, so I had to stop for some fuel. And you know you're kind of in a ghetto area when they make you pay before you filled your car. Um, but that's where the cheap tents are. So 5% here's limo. Then they go up to 20 and 35. So what I think I'm gonna do is throw the, uh, the limos on the backs and then toss the 20s on the front. Here's what she looks like. So you can tell a bit of a difference. That one's limo, that one's 20%. Good morning, guys. Uh, another kind of crappy day out here in Toronto. And uh, because of that, I was planning on doing the floor here. Uh, once again, I've got the 3M insulation, uh, big roll of Reflectix. And my plan for the floor was just to layer Reflectix. I'm gonna reuse the subfloor that came with the van um, and just kind of finish that off um, to get started on the, on the rest of the panels and stuff like that. Uh, and then come back to it and probably put down like a nice hardwood on top. 
Um, but because it's raining, I don't want to track uh, water in and out while I'm laying this. So I've decided that the best next use of my time will be to insulate um, the top of the cabin here. So let's get to it. So I watched a couple of YouTube videos on doing this. Um, and they say basically you just start taking out screws. Um, and that's all that should be holding that in on the top section. Then you're going to take out your side panels. And then there's a couple um, like kind of pop nuts at the top here. And so you just kind of wiggle it down, pop it down. It's kind of hard to film and show you what I'm doing, but I'll do my best. Okay, a couple more screws just to get the uh, sun visor out of the way. Um, these little ones here. And then there's one up in there. The hard part's gonna be getting back together. All right, have a look. So look at all that space here, and that's just sheet metal. So before we get into insulation, I know there's hundreds of different ways to do it. I've read all those videos, or the blog posts and the YouTube videos. Um, but what I've gathered is that this thin slate stuff um, is one of the best options. So what I'm choosing to do is I'm gonna spray this on direct onto the metal. Um, I might even do two layers, and then I'm gonna Reflectix on top of that. Reflectix um, to add that extra ther uh, thermal barrier, and um, but also to create some kind of uh, water barrier. And that's why I see a lot of people doing Reflectix right onto the metal, um, and then insulation. But I figured it's more important to have a good quality water barrier. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so a little update here. Seems to be working pretty well. What I've done is I've just shoved as much of this thin slate into that kind of crevice in the corner because there's a huge gap. And then I just did a line of the um, 3M77 adhesive. And uh, now I've ju I'm just sticking it up piece by piece. But if you have a look, pretty happy with the way that's looking. There we go. Make sure you wear a mask. My camera is really annoying. Okay, this is not my uh, genius thought, but I, I, I'm stealing this from a YouTube video I watched. Uh, but basically, when we got these channels here, and we want to insulate them. Uh, I saw someone use a string and then tie the piece of insulation to it, and then tie the other end of the string to it, like a piece of tissue or something, and then tape up all the holes and get your shot back and try and suck the string from this side to this side and then you've got the insulation tied on the end and you can just pull it through. So we're gonna test it, see if it works. Now my first go was not successful, um, but I found that if you literally tape up everything, um, then it does work. I had to kind of feed it up at this end. Uh, what I might try, I'm just using like twine, but what I might try is like a thinner, rope like a fishing line or something just so it's lighter uh, and then hopefully it sucks across easier but now I've just got my insulation tied on the other end so as I pull this in theory my insulation should pull through just feed it a little bit to get it started yes it works. Beautiful. It's quite a tedious process. So we've done the three panels. We got two left. 
But I'm starting to find the tricks of the trade. Liner is basically complete. We got it back up. Uh, it's looking good. No major issues there. Now my next step is to figure out electrical before I insulate the rest of the vehicle. Um, and what I'm thinking is I'm just going to go around with a, a marker and some tape and tape off where I'm planning on putting all the electrical. And then I start need to start thinking about the conduit and how to run uh, all the lines. Because this vehicle has these channels, um, it'd be good to utilize all these little spaces and crevices. Um, that way when you're applying board flush to it, you're not going to deal with like a little a wire giving you issues. So I think that might sound easier than it is, but I'll spend a couple minutes trying to figure that out. My plans right now are LED lights, about six of them running along there. I've got a, one of those fantastic fans coming in here, it's only 12 volt. A DC uh, fridge, a DC pump, and then I want to put an AC um, outlet there. It's like we've got nicer weather and my brother and my dad have come by to help out finish up with the insulation and basically what we're doing is just spraying and tacking on so this thin slate is an absolute pleasure to work with and we've just been doing double layers so hitting it with the uh, this 3M spray which is a 77 adhesive and uh, basically just shoving it into every single nook and cranny and it seems to be going pretty good okay have a look we've got all thin slate installed and we're actually just working on getting the floor done but basically what we've done here this is two coats of the thin insulation and that's just sprayed on and we've really shoved it into the corners and just done our best job to hide all exposed metal and then as far as the electrical goes we bought some more wire and we've just run basically it underneath the floor this is all 12 gauge so we've got our DC water pump, our DC refrigerator, um, which will hook up to those two leads. I've got an AC outlet here and an AC outlet going here. So that's for these leads. Um, this one, I think I showed you earlier, but this I ran conduit all through the uh, channel and all the way up here. I think that's a bit overkill. So for the, uh, the fridge and the pump, I just went with, uh, you know, taping it down. And then also we've got the fantastic fan and I've just run another channel along here. So once again, 12 gauge wire, just taped it on. Now if you're doing this, make sure that you don't have any corners like super tight because if it does start to move, the last thing you want is it rubbing up against metal and then you could short circuit it or run into any other issues. So I've given lots of room, but this is all Gorilla Tape. You know, the wire shouldn't be going anywhere. And everything leads down to here, which will be Battery Bank Central. And I really have no idea how to do that. So I'm just basically doing everything else and then I'll sit down at the computer and step by step try and research. If there's anyone in the Toronto area that has done a van uh, conversion or you know works in RVs or anything, hit me up. Okay, and now I think what we're gonna do is run Reflectix. Hey, Beck, you gonna help with the with the Reflectix? No, I no, but I wanted to say hi, and then I'm just running. You're in the terrible business. light. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm just running the business while my buddy does this, so it might look like I'm not contributing to the van, but she's actually working a lot harder than yeah, I. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you smell like onions. Thanks, babe. I just had a sub. <laughs> Okay, so what we've decided here is to roll the largest piece uh, flush. My original plan was to roll and start with one side and then cut out the wheel well. But my dad 
the genius he is, um, thought it'd be better if there was no seam, considering this is going to be the most walked no surface where you walk, yes. and the most, um, you know, the most used space. So you don't want seams, and then it slides around. So I think that was a good move. Um, also, we were going to uh, we were going to spray the whole thing down with that 3M adhesive, um, but we've decided against that as well just because I don't think this stuff's gonna move anywhere and um, you know, in the case that I wanna rip it up, we can. So now we're just gonna do the wheel wells, um, the little missing spots, and then lay the floor. Reflectix liner, complete. You know, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. And we basically, obviously we've got our full plank the roll I bought was four feet, so that's four feet. Uh, and then we just cut like a square section here, a rectangle section, and you just squeeze the reflectix into the corner and just get a nice sharp zacto. So we did a pretty good job. And once again, I, like there's no point in us, um, I was gonna spray adhesive to stick that down, but we've just taped little corners and then the, the floor is going on top anyway, so. Pretty stoked on that. Let's lay the floor. Okay, that's a wrap for, uh, I guess, day two here. And pretty successful day. Six hands versus two makes a big difference. So as far as next steps go, I gotta wait for my fan to get in. And then I guess start working on the roof. And my swivel seats just arrived. So I'm gonna show you how to put those in. This is where I got the, uh, the attachment. Discount van truck SUV RV Sprinter. I don't even know if that's a company. But there's the instructions. Pretty simple. <sighs> My office is... What's going on here? My office is right along the highway. So whenever I'm filming outside, it gets really loud. So I'll try and close the doors. And I'm showing you how to do this. So let's have a look here. Remove the seatbelt or D ring that is attached to the outboard side of the seat. D ring. Okay, so it says to remove the seatbelt, but I don't think that's actually necessary. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the seat part off the base. So we got the seat off and there's this whole kind of bucket that the actual seat sits on. And there's also like this little kind of door to get in there. So because storage is 
you know, so valuable. I'm thinking I'm gonna build a piece of wood there and kind of clean this area up and maybe store my tools or something in there. So just one piece of wood, cover it up. I'm not gonna spend too much time, but they'll be great. Little toolbox. Measure twice, cut once. bolts are lining up except for the last one. Hey, I bought the uh, Sprinter. Uh, it's for a 2008 and my bolts don't line up. They're onto the base. So apparently the floor can make the base plate a little uneven and pull the uh, bolts kind of sideways or whatever. So mine didn't line up. And the solution to this is to basically loosen off the base off the ground. The guys that basically pull those up a little bit and then these should line up. So we'll give it a go. Okay, just a little pro tip here. When you're trying to loosen bolts that have been in for a long time, take a hammer and just give them a solid smack before you pull them up, just to loosen up the rust. Otherwise, you'll split your, well, you'll split whatever you're trying to pull up. Look who just arrived. Hello, hello, hello. Some of us need sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's wow. exciting, we got those bolts in. And then, there she is. She swivels and spins. Okay, so is that what I do? I just lift that and swivel? Like yeah, once the chair's on, it's gonna yeah. be easier. Oh, okay. And you just hold that up and just yeah. slide your legs around. That's neat. Are you having one too? No, I'm just doing it on this side. I wanna maximize yeah. the amount of counter space because once you swivel it, you'll oh, you'll have right. to be that clearance and then the counter's gonna be here anyway, so. Well, where are you gonna sit when I sit here? I'm gonna have a pull-out stool there. Cute. Yeah. But he's in his glory. That it's all coming pressure. along. Yeah. So I just found out that we uh, got the panel. It's six by three. Okay. So we pick it up in two weeks. My sister works at a solar company, so we're getting a free solar panel, which is amazing. That's cute. Last night I was doing a little bit of work and was playing the radio through the dash. I was like, oh, I'll just play it for an hour. Pick the uh, the old girl's fried. <laughs> 